Okay, I just landed my first HVAC job at the local company. How should I act? What if I screw up something? What if I don't know the answer to the question? What if I fall through the ceiling when we're up in the attic? What if I don't have the right tools? It's so exciting for you, but at the same time, you don't want to give up a bad first impression. If you're getting ready for your first day on the job as an HVAC technician, then this is the video for you. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down below. Then you can click that little bell right next to it. If you do, then you'll be notified of all of our upcoming videos. And if you happen to know a friend that's just now getting into the industry or wants to get into the industry, share this video with them. Let them know what's up. I just can't help but think about my first day on the job as an HVAC technician. I was totally green and I had been hired as a level one installer. So I was pretty much going to be a helper for somebody. All I knew is we would be installing air conditioners and furnaces in homes, people's homes. So that sounded cool to me. So I was told to come to the shop and be there at six o'clock and to meet Josh Porter for our first day of work. That happened on a Tuesday and by Wednesday morning, I was working. I met Josh at the shop and I was right on time. Uh, and on the way, he let us know that we were gonna be installing a ground mount package unit up in Sutter Creek that day. The ride was about an hour long, so we kind of had to make a conversation uh, among strangers uh, along the way there. So um, I've never been really bad at that. So making conversations, not very hard for me, but along the way, I found out that he was a father. Uh, he had a family, a couple kids, was just trying to work hard to raise his family. So he came across to me as a really down to earth guy. When I got to the job, I felt pretty awkward and everybody's going to feel awkward. When you get out there, it's kind of like deer in the headlights feeling. Um, you just want to be cool. You just want to not screw up. I decided I would just do whatever Josh told me to do. And it was actually really cool because Josh didn't expect anything from me. In fact, he taught me my first HVAC skill that morning, which was the tape and seal. Uh, so he was like, hey man, you know how to do the tape and seal? Uh, you ever done a tape and seal before? And I was like, no, how do you do that? Um, and so he showed me, he took me to the restroom uh, where the first register was and uh, we, the register was down on the ground. We uh, took the metal register off and then we basically took some mastic tape and sealed up between the metal can, uh, the metal boot that the duct is attached to uh, and the wood floor that um, uh, surrounds that can because we were trying, our first lesson was that we we're trying to seal off the air gaps between the can and the flooring so um, more of the heated air gets into the home. So I got done with that register and he told me that there were 13 more around the house to go do. Um, and he also told me that they're really easy to miss, so to pay extra attention and make sure I get all the registers. And I finished all those registers in about an hour, so that kind of gives you a little idea. It's kind of slow for a journeyman, but, um, but it's a pretty decent pace for a, a, a brand new apprentice. After I got done with that, I didn't mess around, and I got right back to Josh. Technicians, this is a great point to make. Get your stuff done, get back to your lead quickly, Get on to the next job. Um, the next task that Josh showed me what to do was the thermostat. And he actually kind of said like, hey, here's the thermostat. You see this, this is the old one, we need to replace it. Um, and basically just gave me the instructions uh, right out of the book and I thought I could do it. So, uh, you know, it took a little bit of time to get it done. You know, after about 10 of those uh, thermostats, I got really good at installing thermostats. So, you know, probably that first one took me 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so like that, just trying to make sure I bend all the wires right, strip the wires right, bend them just perfectly, screw it down nice and tight, make sure everything's perfect. A lot of technicians do this the first day and uh, it's totally expected, you know, it's like people just like, uh, they think it's like rocket science or something like that, just uh, spend a little bit too much time on a task because they get so focused and they just want to nurse it, take care of it, make sure it's just right. So for the rest of the day, I was the hold it guy or the go get it guy or the trash guy. I loved it. You really just want to make yourself available to anything that's needed from the journeyman or any other apprentice or supervisor that might be on the job. And when another apprentice or journeyman asks you to go get something, please, please do it very expeditiously. Go get that thing and get back. Come on, man, we got things to do. Cause I got to tell you, being a slow apprentice is not gonna get you very far and may get you released from your apprenticeship. I know for a fact I've had people, uh, helpers that started with me, and if they move too slow, they do not last. So, I mean, I'm not saying you gotta run to the job, run, get back, you know, it's just like, let's, let's go. 
move it quickly. Let's go. I mean, it's not a run. It's not a jog, but it's damn near close to that. So let's get it going, man. Companies want real go-getters. So show them what you've got. That day at lunch, we sat on our coolers and pretty much just chatted for about a half hour. Um, anything longer than a half hour, I probably feel like we would have gotten a little lazy. So for lunch being a half hour, I was pretty happy with that. And we were sitting outside and it was super nice out that day. So, but once you get done with lunch, back to the grind. I remember how many tools Josh also had in his van. I got to tell you, I was a little overwhelmed at the idea of buying all these tools in the coming months. Later, a supervisor would tell me if I only bought one tool per paycheck, it would show him that I was serious about becoming an HVAC technician. So that's what I did. I made sure I went out and bought a tool each paycheck, one or two, put it in my tool bag and bring it to work. And if you wanna see all the tools that I did end up getting, uh, check out my video on HVAC tools. It's probably one of my most popular videos. I'll leave a card up here so you guys can check it out. So when I got home that day, I was physically tired. I was also emotionally spent because I had spent the night before thinking all night about my following day of work. You know, I mean, I probably slept pretty restlessly the night before work and got up really early to make sure I was there on time and not late. But I gotta tell you what, working in HVAC made me feel like a different person. I've been in the service industry working as a bartender for 15 years. So moving to this type of job was, I don't know, I mean, it just made me feel different. This work made me feel gritty not dirty or messy, but accomplished. And I knew I wanted to do the same thing the next day. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, unless you get hooked up with some real hard ass crew around town, you'll probably be matched up with someone who's well respected by their company, uh, not only for their workmanship, but their ability to communicate with newbies. Fortunately for me, Josh was really cool and eventually became a real mentor for me. To this day, I know I could call him up and ask him a question and he'd give me the answer. And it's really been that way for all the mentors that I had coming up. Uh, between Josh Porter, Mike Scott, Mike Niprith, Jason Kampa, Shad Smith, and Greg Bees, probably the guys that gave me the most advice time and time again, day after day after day, um, I find myself installing exactly like those guys did. So I have become a creation of all of those guys' um, input. And all of those guys, when I was working for them, would tell me to do it a certain way that was a little bit different than that guy's way of doing it. And I found myself saying that a couple times when I first started. Bob does it a different way. You know what? Yeah, everybody does it a different way. So you have to find your way of doing it. Hey, one more note for, um, you know, for that first day on the job is I would also have like a little um, notepad and pen because I found myself um, writing a lot of notes because of, I, I felt like there was so much information that I was receiving um, that when I wrote it down on a little notepad, it made it easier. I'm not lying to you when I tell you the very first time I installed my first condenser, my first AC condenser outside, I did it step by step by instructions that I had written out. Um, along the way as I was learning how you know step one do this step two do this step three do this You know what I mean to me. That's how I learned. You know what I mean? So maybe that's something that you guys want to do and that's HVAC. I mean, it's a brotherhood We've all been there those guys and me We've worked in dangerously hot attics installing furnaces and air conditioners And we've also worked in 18 inch subfloors belly crawling doing ductwork for multiple days at a time I don't need to tell you, but war buddies usually last a lifetime. Sometimes when you're working hard in HVAC, you might cut yourself on some sheet metal every day or bang your head on the trusses up in the attic. It can be very grueling. Uh, and when you're sharing those experiences with other people, uh, it becomes a brotherhood pretty quickly. And then so just think about that brotherhood that you've created with the teammates uh, there with your company. Now. Think about all the HVAC technicians around the world. We've all done that. We've all been there. We've all had that first day on the job, just like you're going to experience, and it's going to be okay. You know, that first day, you're probably going to get some really menial jobs, and you're probably going to get messed with a little bit. So if somebody tells you to grab a trash bag and go outside and get an air sample for the Title 24 inspectors, go ahead and do it, but you're probably getting messed with. Well, good luck to you guys in starting your first day on the job in HVAC. Uh, hopefully this video has exposed you guys to some uh, some of the things that you may experience. You know, I do residential HVAC, so that's all I know. I never did commercial. I never did industrial stuff. So I never did any of that big stuff. Uh, I've always been in the residential market. So that's what this video is aimed for. Is th those of you uh, is for those of you who are starting HVAC. Um, this is your first day on the job and what to expect. Remember, we need HVAC technicians in this field. This industry is going to grow 15% in the next 10 years. 
and we really need qualified technicians to work in these folks' homes. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down below and click that little bell right next to it. You'll be notified of all of our videos that come out. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air Conditioning. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.